Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine, welcoming you in and letting you know it's time for brunch. Where here at brunch, there's always an open table, a hot cup of coffee, and endless running fun to keep you moving and grooving. We are going to have a fun-filled festive workout, so lace up your shoes, put a smile on your face, and let's log some miles. We are gearing up for our final challenge of the year, our 28 days slay the holidays, and we're getting fired up. So it kind of inspired this week's workout. If you're not out for a run, no worries. Come grab a seat at our table and enjoy the festive frivolity that is about to start. The rest of you, let's get ready to go into our walk and warm up in three, two, and one. Regardless if you're staying home for the holidays or gonna be on the go, this time of year feels like a stuffed turkey. It's stuffed full of all of the things. And while we're busy making it special for others, we often fall short and fall off the list. And I don't even think I've gotten a lump of coal. So today's workout will give you a little extra fun, light your fire and get you ready to shine bright like a shamish on the menorah. And Christine, this workout is one of those, I feel like we break out 365 all the days of the year. I mean, this is one of the fun things because again, I love being able to challenge ourselves in a way that it feels doable. So this is exactly what I feel from this spe specific workout. Now that doesn't mean that you're not going to leave it and be like, what were they thinking? And <laughs> I don't think I ever want to talk to them again, but you'll love us later. You trust us on that friends. So I can't get, I can't wait to get into it. I'm also super excited coach because it's been some time that we've done a fun would you rather here now we've done it for our premium podcast of course and our challengers but we know that for brunch it's been a little bit of a time for us to be able to bring that forward so i'm looking forward to that because i feel like nothing quite says wow they really are different as would you rather because i don't know that we tend to pick the, ch the same responses sometimes we do but th that team sweet team savory comes out a little bit more with the would you rather Oh yeah, so if you have subscribed, which if you haven't already, please do, to our newsletter, you got your own little bit of Would You Rather a game. Make sure you fill it out, post and tag us on social media so we can all have a little healthy debate of what is this or what is that. But it's going to be so funny to see. I, there's a few questions I already know your answers for. But we're oh, gonna really? get you think yo, so? oh yeah, there's some for sure. But as we put now together, I want to guess for you. Oh oh, well I won't okay. give away the ones that I think I know. Okay. But as we're getting warmed up, definitely take a moment, friends, to shake out any of those little bit of frosty, feisty pieces of your body. Maybe roll your shoulders a little bit. Maybe stop and do a hamstring stretch or two because this workout is going to test you and don't worry we'll go ahead and give you the workout and then distract you so you can just plow away i'm trying to make a snow pun but i feel like us floridians it's like not in our jurisdiction to make snow puns i feel like yes we get called out a little bit we get we get called out to um the the i don't know what you would call it the winter holiday kind of thing. But you know, we do have our version of winter down here, friends. And you guys should just come join us for it because it's pretty fabulous. But with that said, coach, I am super looking forward to exactly like you said, this workout, because hopefully you guys are going to definitely get really nice and warmed up and get limbered up, especially if the weather has turned a little frosty on your side of the world. So if you need to take a little bit longer to warm on up, feel free to do so. But once we're done with the warm up, we are going to roll into two halves of the workout. So the first half is going to have four sets of five minutes where we're going to ask you to challenge yourself and bring your way up into a tempo or even a more of like a threshold, anaerobic threshold. So anywhere from that six to eight on that RP. Now for the first few sets, I would definitely say friends, you're going to want to hang out around that six, which is the lower part of your tempo pace. And that's something you can comfortably hold for about 60 minutes, but you're not really comfortable. You're going to be working at sentence pace. So you're not going to, you're probably going to be able to answer 
our would you rathers, but you wouldn't be able to get in a whole conversation with us. But don't worry because it's five minute blocks and then two minute recoveries where you're going to pull it back into what you prefer, a a walk, a light jog or a conversation pace. And then we get to repeat that again. I'm going to say, friends, I'd love to see you guys challenge yourselves right here and now with making that happen maybe even a little bit of a progression where you're a bit more conservative for the first ones out of the gate and then push into a little bit more of a faster pace toward a little bit of fire, creating that heat towards the back half of this workout. Absolutely. And we're coming to the end of our walking warm up. So if you want to go ahead and take these last 30 seconds or so and get yourself into a nice light jog, we are not going to be grinchy about it. We're all here for doing what we need to do to get up and get moving a little bit more. Again, if you need to stop, do any last minute stretches. We want to make sure your tinsel is not in a tangle. So getting into that light jog here, taking a minute, doing that hip to toe scan, checking in. And we're going to go ahead and get into our first block of our five minutes at that six to eight RPE. Again, heating coach Christine's advice, starting out a little bit more on the conservative side, getting yourself worked into the worked out so it does not work over you. So with that, let's embark on our first of our five minute blocks in three, two, and one, gradually speeding up a little bit, making that foot turnover a little bit more and a little bit more, getting nice and settled in. And I feel like I should let you go first as we dive into our this or that as our athletes here go ahead and dive into their workout. Well, first, I kind of want to talk about why we're even getting into these Would You Rathers a little bit is because we're going to be highlighting all of the incredible winter holidays that you love. And I think you look forward to this time of year more than any other time of year. But I know you love these winter holidays. And of course, they're all going to be highlighted during our Slay the Holidays Challenge. So I'm curious, Coach, before I get into Would You Rather, I guess it is a little bit. Tell me your favorite if you had to pick one of these. Which one are you picking? Oh, so it's between Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, and New Year's. Yes, you have to only have one. I feel like that's so mean. I I can already hear your brain, like you're already doing like a bracket style. So I think that New York New Year's is gonna get knocked out. I think you're going to probably battle. I think it's going to be the last two battle is going to be Hanukkah and Christmas. That's 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 exactly that's exactly what bracket I'm going between now. I think because in my family, they Mm -hmm. are so interwoven, which I know sounds pretty different considering they're technically two religious holidays. Um, Oh, I'm going to say Christmas does edge out Hanukkah a little bit. So do you guys celebrate Christmas? Or yeah, there... we basically have Chrismica. We actually okay. do, instead of presents per se for Hanukkah, we've always given Christmas ornaments for Hanukkah to then Aww. put on our Christmas tree. And that's how we always just worked the two. It was a very copacetic relationship. And yeah. But there was one year that Thanksgiving and Hanukkah did intertwine, and that was hecka fun. Ooh. But I kind of like the idea of when they're not intertwined, to be honest. It feels to me like you can keep the celebration rolling the entire month. Which that's is exactly what we're going to do with the challenge. The 28 that, days worth of challenges. Yeah. I'm about to say, I'm like, maybe that's why I love this time of year. Because it's just mm-hmm. one party after another, after another. But even with the challenge, it all really is. And copacetic is going to be my my word of the day, I guess. Because okay. it all really does interweave all together. And make it to where each week is like a party in itself. So with copacetic, does that mean that we're going to have in an extra challenge? Do we need to have anybody do like any snowman freezes whenever you say that word? Or do they have to pick up the pace or something? (laughs) We're not going to torture them quite that much this particular workout. I think we'll save that for the premium podcast. Maybe we'll okay. maybe we'll add a little extra snowflake dusting to those workouts for that. So be prepared, people. Be prepared. Well, with that said, we're about three minutes in, friends. So this is a great time before we do an official would you rather. We would rather you guys right here now do a tip to toe check in. Make sure you're rolling through here nice and tall. You're keeping that core engaged. You have a light smile on your face. You're relaxed. You're moving. You're grooving. You're enjoying this. Again, remembering that we're working in the upper level tempo here, or maybe even a little bit faster if you so wish to, of course. But we see that recovery coming down the pike. It's here in less 
been, well, just a little bit over 90 seconds, I should say. Okay, coach, I feel like I really did. I kept it going for some time, but now I'm going to ask, would you rather always smell like turkey or always smell like gravy? Oh, man. That's a hard one. That is. Neither. (laughs) That's the right answer. (laughs) Actually, I'm going to go with turkey because my mom puts a turkey rub and it's like paprika and salt Mm. and pepper. Very minimal. We do. We go ahead and we don't brine our turkey. We don't do any of that, even in my turkey eating days. But I would rather smell like that because to me, that smells like home. That smells like the holidays. And I love paprika. I am Mm. a paprika fiend, which, again, really weird thing. But I, I, I would definitely like paprika has that much of a smell, and I don't think it even it has right. that much of a taste. Like I like the Hungarian paprika because it's a bit spicier, but I don't think I've actually really. Sm- I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go sniff <laughs> some paprika after this. <laughs> now we're going off of the rails. So yeah, yeah, I would, I would rather smell like turkey, I think, than gravy. All right. Well, one of the wonderful things again is that for folks that would rather smell like turkey, we're going to have our very own turkey trot for the premium podcast, of course, with the first week, because we are kicking off the challenge on November 20th. And we definitely would love to have you guys join us just a few days away from when this episode drops. You definitely do not want to be late to it because of course we will close and then we'll have to get that sleigh a going. So we want you guys to join on in on the fun and right about here is also a great fun time for you to pull it back in three, two, one into your recovery of choice. But what I'm going to ask you is not to automatically stop, let yourself roll through, pull back a little bit nice and gently into your preferred recovery, be it a walk or a conversation piece or a little bit of a wog. I'm a big fan of the walking jog. Or wobble till you gobble. Yes. I Every time I hear wobble, I think of the song, baby, wobble, 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 wobble. You know that song? Everybody does. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, now we're, now we're going to have to know. This isn't an official this or that question, but do you, in fact, know the wobble song? Are we talking about, is there a different wobble song versus like the hip hop one? No, it's the hip hop one. Oh, yeah. I know. I definitely know that one. I don't oh, okay. Know like know the artist and they're not probably gonna be my besties but I'm, <laughs> I, I can't say whether or not it'll be on my wrapped playlist but I think it might be we'll see I, I mean it could be there's a turkey version that's really funny too but now I have a this or that question because when we did the recording for our turkey trot episode I learned something about you that you oh, okay. don't like stuffing or yeah, in some not. areas people call it dressing so yes. would you rather eat an entire turkey by yourself or eat all of the Thanksgiving stuffing by yourself? I think both of them are a surefire way of ending up at the hospital. I mean, that's what I, <laughs> I, I, that's what I feel like I'm hearing. Or I in mean, a really deep sleep from the the turkey, whatever whatever that sleeping thing is uh, and the stuffing, yeah, I mean, from carbs the trypto, on carbs. Tryptophan, yeah. It has you wouldn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. <laughs> I don't know. Gosh, that's a hard one. I, I guess I honestly, all I think of when I think of eating that much meat is like, back to the like when I used to watch the food channel obsessively and them talking about the meat sweats that looks like not an enjoyable way to spend the holidays I'm gonna talk about the meat sweats but I didn't know if you would have any idea what I was talking yeah, about no I don't I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this friends but first I'm gonna ask you guys to take it into your next set you're pulling up that pace in three two and one of course I will use anything I possibly can to give myself more time to answer these very difficult would you rather questions and of course friends we really do want you guys to share along with us Um, so you're right about now working your way through getting into that tempo pace a few more seconds give it a little bit more and then just lock it in right here and now and we'll let you know when it's time to pull back for recovery so coach gosh I think I do not like stuffing or dressing but I think it would be, this, this is the logical version of me. The logical <laughs> version of me thinks that it would be easier to digest. And I'm all about trying not to have GI distress for a week after the holidays. So I think I'm going to go with the cornbread stuffing because I think I could handle the digestive better. Like, I'm how do you ex- eat a whole turkey? I'm going to accept how do you do the that? answer. Okay. But I love how you also added extra detail if it's specifically cornbread stuffing. Oh, yeah. So if I'm going to have stuffing, I, I'm going to get cornbread for the record. <laughs> See, we don't use cornbread. We actually use potato bread as part of our stuffing. Well, that makes sense. That kind it's of delicious. That, yeah, that does make sense. Which is funny because um, it's a little bit sweeter. So it's a sweet savory. 
I think that most people do like that sweet savory. It kind of dings in the brain a couple different ways and it throws off some of those pleasure sensors. So I could see that. But honestly, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. But I'm curious, what would you do? I mean, you, would you have a tofurkey? I would know. I would eat the stuff. I love stuffing. Te okay. Well, technically, again, we, and we talk about this ad nauseum during the turkey trot. <laughs> so be prepared if you're signing up for the challenge to hear a lot about our debate over dressing or stuffing. I love dressing. I, I could eat dressing all day, every day if I had my way. I loved that episode because I feel like I learned a lot about you. And I think... <laughs> I think I learned a lot about myself, so much so that I actually ended up having that conversation on the next run with my run buddy. I'm like, I guess I didn't realize these things about myself. And I literally just learned them because we were recording the Turkey Trot episode. Um, so I think it's it's definitely a lot of fun to, to have those opportunities. And what's also a lot of fun, friends, is that you're almost at the halfway point of this little interval here. And this is what's so great about these style of workouts, right? Is that we're talking you through. So you have a way of just kind of getting into that groove and then you kind of just do hit that cruise control and where you would normally, if you were on your own or maybe even listening to music, you might start to kind of let that inner talk, that inner dialogue tell you to slow down, but you're not even noticing how hard of an effort you're going at because we've got, you've got us to kind of keep you going and flowing. So coach, what are you suggesting folks do when they're wrapping up this interval for about two more minutes, a little bit over two more minutes, what should they do to make it as, as easy as Thanksgiving pie? <laughs> well, it depends on which pie we're talking about. Oh, that's a we whole should other debate. <laughs> yeah. But really, as you're getting into the latter part of the specific rep, focusing on that recovery, this is a great time to kind of check into how it's feeling because now we're going to have two reps under our belt. Pat, pun. And yes, I call out my own puns, which I don't know if that's actually a good thing. Anyway, sorry, off track, coming back. We're going to do what I should have done is take a deep breath, refocus, take inventory and focus on putting it up just an extra little notch for the next two reps. Again, this should be only a slight percentage difference when it comes to actual pace, but just putting in our mindset and saying, okay, I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit more. Maybe that's turning in the oven from preheat to full on cook, it is up to you. But again, just taking these last few minutes, focusing on your cadence and then really honoring that recovery coming soon. Oh, I'm excited about that. But you know what I'm also excited about? I really actually cannot wait to hear this answer because I do think that we're going to be very different on this one. Okay. So I want to know, would you rather be in a Thanksgiving Day parade or be one of the hosts commenting on the parade? And we talked ad nauseum about the parade <laughs> and the Thanksgiving turkey trot as well. I, I'd want to be in the parade, I think, which is really? probably, I, I know this is going to surprise you. I'm shocked. I am I, so shocked. I love the hosting. I mean, obviously, hello podcast, yeah, but yeah. I would want to be in the parade and like throwing candy and dancing and all of that funness. Like I have a hard time sitting still in our seats when we're doing our recording yeah. to where if I had to do that during a parade, I know I want to be on the ground. I'll take a mic with me, but I want to be on the ground. Well, folks, you won't have to be on the ground because that recovery is coming your way. So just keep pushing through for 10 more seconds. We know that you've got what it takes. Put that little bit of, um, I don't know, turkey burn to your feet as we go ahead and pull it back right here and now into your recovery in three, two, one, two minutes here. We are just flying through this. And I am so excited, coach. And now I want to like, there's so many great questions that we're going to have to, I, I don't even know where to go next because there's like, I want to know all the answers to these. All right. I want to know this one because this okay. one made me giggle. And I'm honestly not really sure which one I would pick. Uh -huh. Maybe it's because neither would bother me that much. Would you rather eat an entire Thanksgiving meal with just your hands or have to open all your gifts using a fork? Uh, that one's actually pretty easy for me. I, I'd really? rather, yeah, absolutely. I am without a doubt opening my gifts with a fork. Really? Yes, absolutely. Like, how do you eat? How do you eat any of the things except for the turkey with your hands? Like, well, so I guess we should talk about like holiday traditions. I, I don't have a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. So we have like pasteles or arroz con gandules. I'm not eating that with my hands. How do you do that? You make so, yeah, little pinchies. Like you take your pointer finger and your thumb and you just pinch and pick everything up. I mean, maybe if it was more like, um, I know that there's an Ethiopian dish 
bread style bread where you could pretty much use that almost as a utensil. If there was something like that on the Thanksgiving dinner, I might use it, but I, I'm really okay with using a fork to open my gifts. I'm pretty positive. I could figure that out really, really, really easily. Mm -hmm. See, I, I don't think either would really bother me, but I probably just eat with my hands like an animal. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with it. It doesn't really bother me. Like the only thing that'd be a little hard would probably be the gravy, but then yeah. I would just use everything else to sop it up. So I feel like um, medieval times is kind of like your jam. Like, I feel like you could definitely go to that. Is that still around? That medieval times themed? Isn't that up near you? Mm hmm. I don't, I don't know. know. Now we're gonna I don't know if it's still around. <laughs> but for friends that don't know what it is, we'll tell you guys about it as you go into your next interval where you're pumping it up that RP six to eight. Let's go in three, two, one. If you've been hanging out of that six, this is that time. I'm going to tell you, you can challenge yourself. You could put a little bit of extra turkey spice, maybe even, I don't know, paprika there on there if you wish. So let's keep going, keep moving, keep grooving, keep pushing all the way through, knowing that you have a recovery waiting for you on the other side of this. And right about here, you've hit that pace. Let's lock it in. Coach, I don't know if there's a medieval time, but what it is, is it was a dinner show here around these here parts. And I'm curious if folks have it in other parts of the world and you get to eat with your hands. Actually, it was mandatory to eat with your hands. So I feel like it kind of is a Thanksgiving feast without utensils. Uh, I would only do it like in my own home, but again, <laughs> germaphobe Shelby, I would need to like wash my hands before or anything. But I mean, I even eat like my laka with my hands. I very rarely use a fork. I just I mean, scoop. I, think, I, I scoop up the applesauce or the sour cream, and that call feels it a day. like it is a more of a. I could see that being more of like a finger food. Yeah, um, fork and knife it. I do personally, but still, I could see where that one is a little bit easier to get away with. I just, I think, I think it would be different. Like mashed potatoes, I can't even fathom how you would do mashed potatoes unless we put them on like a bread roll. Oh, now we're carbo loading. Now I'm yeah. liking your style. Okay, my friend, this one I think is super interesting because I am curious. <laughs> I I feel again, like I'm asking you questions that I think that I know the answer to, and I'm curious if it okay. ends up being correct. Would you rather cook and clean up Thanksgiving dinner or shop for everyone in your family on Black Friday? Oh, I would rather cook and clean Thanksgiving dinner. See, oh my gosh, this goes to show I know nothing. I thought I, you love shopping. I, I hate Black Friday with an undying passion. Okay, so you like shopping the rest of the year. This is yes. the one day a year that you don't like shopping. Yeah, I don't want a people on Black Friday. I, I, okay. I, and I don't know if it's just from working in retail in my previous life or not, mm -hmm. but no, I do not want to be out on Black Friday. Even though one of the workouts I will you design for the challenge I had in mind specifically for those doing Black Friday mm -hmm. and being able to get like a little, little mini workout in the line. I will not be doing that workout in a Black Friday line. I will be doing it from the comfort of my own home. Okay. I got you, girl. I do. I personally avoid Black Friday um, at all costs. So that's definitely not happening for me. And I have cooked and cleaned for an entire, I have hosted Thanksgiving dinners multiple times. Um, can't say that I'm doing that anymore either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but now talking about gifts, that kind of does lead me into, because right after Thanksgiving, we do have Hanukkah, which for those who might not be familiar with Hanukkah, it is the Festival of Lights, the miracle of eight days of Hanukkah. So traditionally, you have laka, which are shredded potato pancakes. Yummy. You have jelly donuts. You have the menorah that has the eight days of candles, not including the shamish or the, the leader candle that you use mm -hmm. to light the other candles. If you had to pick, if you were to celebrate Hanukkah, would you rather have eight days or eight nights of small gifts or would you just want one large gift? Oh, that's such a really good question. It depends on like, do the small gifts come from Tiffany's um, <laughs> or is the one large gift kind of more like something I wouldn't ever want to use like a lawnmower? So that, that, that's like a, that's a very depends question, but I, I'm actually so excited for gifts anyway, that I can't imagine that I would. I don't think I would care. I, I would really want the gift that people would want to give me, if that makes any sense. Whatever would actually, I think I do prefer one large gift because I want it. I'd rather it be 
large, small, medium, it doesn't matter, but meaningful, something that actually seems like, okay, this is something that speaks to me. It reminds me of you, something I think you'll love versus just kind of like throwaways. Like that's why I don't think I'm a big fan of stocking stuffers. I feel like those end up becoming kind of disposable. Yeah, see, I'm the opposite. I would rather have like eight small, like fun gifts than Mm -hmm. like one big gift. And maybe that's just because I feel really awkward getting gifts. But we'll talk about it more as we talk about Christmas, but I do love my stockings. But yeah, for, for Hanukkah, we always got a small gift. We always got the christmas ornaments leading up to christmas so maybe that's why i would also pick the eight small gifts i don't know we can we can ponder that i think it's a super special way of of incorporating those two i i do love that and i think that another thing that people are going to absolutely love here is that next recovery is up in three two and one so coach people have smoked on through three sets we have one more here before we have a two minute break and then we have the back half of this conversation I am very, very impressed with everybody. Even though I might not be able to see you, I do know you are getting the miles in and laughing along because, again, a little bit of laughter goes a long way and it helps your breathing as you're going through these harder efforts. So again, reminding everybody, take a big deep breath, shake out your arms, maybe do a little neck stretch if you need to as we're in this recovery before we go into that fourth set and slay some more of these holidays, this or that, because I do love this or that. It's probably one of my favorite games we play. So it is my favorite for sure. But you know what? I also think that's one of my favorites is the fact that this specific week in the challenge is really like what I would consider very much a random acts of kindness. But I don't know a lot about Hanukkah, so I'm learning a lot more about it from you. So could you explain kind of a little bit about how that's going to be incorporated into our challenge? Right. So for the week of Hanukkah, our miracle workouts and mitzvahs. And if you're not familiar with the mitzvahs, we touched a little bit on one of the up there episodes, but it's an act of good nature, good deed, something that you do to spread joy. And it's called a mitzvah. So the entire miracle workouts and mitzvahs are going to, of course, play on a little bit of the eight days of Hanukkah and talking about the festival of lights. And we're also going to be having our mitzvahs for ourselves as well as others to spread some holiday cheer because we can all get a little grinchy as the weeks and the days go by. But while we want to show up for others, we also want to show up for ourselves. So introducing the miracle of mitzvahs is a fun way and something that I'm really excited to dive more into during that week because again good cheer never goes out of style oh i love that what also goes never goes out of style is to be kind to ourselves and that's what we're going to do by showing ourselves that we've got what it takes for one more set in three two one let's do it my friends pull on up five minutes on the clock for you to show you what you're made of while we learn a little bit more about Hanukkah, would you rather? Because coach, I'm not gonna pretend like I know how to say the official term, but I do, Can I cannot stress to you how much I love potato latkes. I could have those 3,365 days a year for sure. So would you rather eat latkes or the jelly filled donuts? And this may be the one and only time that you may come on over team sweet. I'm curious, maybe. Nope, I am a latka girl. <laughs> okay. I've never been into the jelly donuts and I I actually cannot say the official name of it. I'm gonna try, but Safganyot, I'm not sure. Okay. Again, I feel like there's one brancher that's gonna message me and he's oh. gonna be like, this is how you say it. He's gonna let me know the entire thing. I feel dissertation. like you're gonna get two brunchers, my friend. You're gonna get a couple of brunchers. You're gonna be like, hey, this is how we do it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> I am okay with it. I, again, I have very different ways that we celebrate the, the holidays as a whole. But yeah, I, potato laka all the way. I don't like jelly. So just the jelly mm. donuts in general have never been um They don't appeal to thing. you at all. No, I do like, I will say there is another jelly filled dessert, um, humatashin. And it's okay. kind of like a cookie with some jelly. So it's called Thumatashin. Again, might not be me pronouncing it the great, but I do love some rugula. And that is a sweet I can get down with. They have apricot filled ones. They have nut filled ones. They have cinnamon. They have chocolate. That is absolutely on my table. Mm-hmm. Okay. I went off I mean, on a tangent, but you got me on the you got me on the food, and that's where I I play. I was gonna say food is truly one of the things that we could talk about, where it's all about that love. Which again, that's what the Hanukkah week will be all about is that love of 
yourself with giving yourself some extra time in a way that feels manageable. And of course, the love for others, which may be in that way of, of showing them some some of your latka love and sending them a couple latkes. I'm basically making my pitch that I want Coach Shelby to send me latkes. But another thing that we could definitely pitch here, friends, is that you're about halfway through this set. So maybe you've been hanging out at that tempo at six. Maybe you've been working in that anaerobic threshold um, around seven or eight, but knowing that you've got what it takes to keep pushing on through. So this is also a great reminder to check on in with that form. Sometimes about here is when you could start to get that shoulder creep. And by that, we mean those shoulders start to tense up. You actually are tensing in your back a little bit. You're pulling those shoulders up to your ears. And we want you to go ahead and pull those shoulders down and back. Keep that chest nice and open. Continue breathing through knowing that you have just a little over two minutes to go. So coach, with that said, I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. Would you rather play dreidel? And I think I know that's going to be the answer, but play dreidel with chocolate gelt or real money. Ooh. The answer, she just runs to play dreidel. Friends. Yeah, That's I it. just, I <laughs> love dreidel. That was the entire inspiration between the fitness dreidel workout that we're going to be doing the challenge is that I love dreidel. I think it's mm-hmm. so fun. It's actually a very simple game once you learn the the signs and, and the rules, but I want to gimmel it all to me. I'm going to go with chocolate coins though. You are. Does I am. feel more festive and holiday-ish to you? Yes. Exactly. Okay. I've never, I've always played okay. with gel or chocolate coins. Um, I've never actually used real money. And mm-hmm. it's really fun too when you're too busy grabbing them from everybody. Like when you get the hay and the gimmel and they get all melted. And then it just, I don't know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. So that's where I go with that, with that portion of it. I also feel like I could see you because I, again, coming to know you more, I could see you repurposing that a little bit where maybe you melt down the chocolate coins and make your own famous straw chocolate covered strawberries that I've heard about. Mm. So is there a little bit of that going on or not really? Uh, and no, I never thought of it that way. Cause usually that gel is not the great for melting, but I like where you're going with okay. that. And okay. Okay. I, I accept that thought process. <laughs> okay. So we're, we're learning here as to what chocolate works best, of course. Um, and I think the answer is all chocolate's good chocolate, right? Except for white chocolate. That doesn't count. That's fake chocolate. Oh, my sister-in-law like would completely disagree. She loves white chocolate. Well, hearkening back to a couple episodes ago, great reminder that it's mind your own plate. So I'm not going to necessarily <laughs> say that white chocolate's not not good chocolate, but if that's what makes you feel good, then friends feel free to eat it. I'm, I'm personally not a fan of it. So coach, you have already mentioned that you kind of do Christmas, but would you rather have a really big Hanukkah party with all your friends or a quiet celebration with the family? Quiet celebration all the way through. I love a good party, but we always had Hanukkah just with Mm -hmm. our immediate family and when my grandma was around she obviously would participate so for me that always just feels right but I do know quite a few of my friends who do big elaborate celebrations and they love them as well well I know what you guys are going to love right here now again is that we're going to have that big elaborate recovery in three two one pull it back for two minutes here into that walk or that nice, easy peasy conversation pace. We're going to have another two minutes to walk it out completely after you're done with this. So take that into consideration and then we'll have the back back half of this workout. So you guys already know what to expect. We're going to keep that fun rolling on through. Now I have one final this or that Hanukkah question for you as we're in this recovery because I feel like this one's Mm going to be polarizing. Would you rather have potato donuts or Boston cream latka. They both sound not good. Right. I, um, I feel I'm my trying, ancestors I'm... going, are you kidding me right now? I, <laughs> they'll be like, what in the hipster did you guys do to our traditional foods? <laughs> right. Um, Cause I, I don't, I don't know my friends. Like I can't fathom it. So I think that that's like, is the potato donut basically just potato flour and it's still going to be sweet because I mean, flour essentially once you mix it, 
And then what does the Boston cream latkes look like? Is it the is that potato with Boston cream on top? I, I this is I, I need more details. Can you, can you give me an ingredient list so that I can maybe <laughs> make my decision from there? I think I think I guess I think I'm going to go with potato donuts might sound safer. I feel like that seems the most logistically possible. Boston cream <laughs> latke for me sounds like... Is it no? It, it just seems like so you're going to have the filling and then douse them in the chocolate. I mean, again, like some sweet and savory can go together because people do have the whole debate sour cream versus applesauce on the latke. Um, both of I those like, are delicious. I say both, just... Yeah. have two plates separately so, yeah yeah exactly. I, I would think the potato donut going back to my stuffing with my potato bread i think that would mm-hmm. be more realistic yes what's also really realistic and super super incredible is you guys have made it to the exact halfway point so let's put it back in three two one we're two minutes here we're going to suggest that you walk it out or shake it out a little bit maybe even do a little bit of that weeble wobble inspiration that coach has waiting for us for the thanksgiving workouts but you're going to go ahead and shake out those legs a little bit maybe even roll those ankles not like you roll it through just roll them nice and easy this like release any kind of tension that you may have built out in your calves and then you are going to consider this the halfway point so if you're in out and back this is your turnaround reminder if not you keep rolling and you keep doing you my friend (laughs) i am really pumped though because like you were saying before all the holidays kind of run into each other it's a great Mm -hmm. time because we have for us that celebrate hanukkah we have hanukkah and then going right into that beginning of the true week before christmas and getting all of that fa la 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 fun which I mean, the workout of the week that week's going to be a fart lick. I don't think we've done a challenge yet where we haven't done a fart lick because we really do love fart licks. They're so much. They're incredible. And so for you guys that may be talking, might be thinking, what are you guys talking about? Maybe you're, you've not yet heard it or you've heard the term and you've been too embarrassed to ask someone. You weren't sure if it had to do with digestive issues from eating an entire turkey, maybe. Um, it really just is a unstructured or it's a structured speed play is the way that we're going to tackle it. But most speed play or fart licks are just unstructured where you kind of just go through all the paces. It's a lot of fun. It's really almost a joyful expression of speed. So that's kind of what I think of when I think of fart licks. But that one I am super duper looking forward to. Um, And that may have been a little bit of the inspiration of this workout here with the Would You Rather. So it's going to be an interesting one. Can't wait to have you guys very interactive, which we've learned throughout uh, all of the challenges, how to make things a bit more interactive. So we're, we have a great time with that. So friends, we're going to go ahead and bring it into that next set. We're starting the back half in three, two, one, five minutes here. Taking that big deep breath again, not going out too hard, too fast, getting back in, letting your feet speed up a little bit, relaxing the shoulders, looking ahead. And of course, just fa la la falling into that perfect present of pace. And maybe you're singing some jingle bells. Maybe you're singing the dreidel song. Maybe you're throwing a little Adam Sandler with the Hanukkah song, which I didn't actually come to find out about until many, many years after it was popular. Have you ever heard that song? Yes. I think it's, I think it's actually in our last year's holiday challenge playlist. I mean, it might be, you can't have a holiday challenge without having that song as part of your playlist. So I think it's actually a lot of fun personally. So I also think that this next week that we're going to be doing that fart lake is also going to be a lot of fun. And I know that we're going to have a lot of different aspects to it. And I think again, that what it is, is like having opportunities to see workouts is a little different Mm -hmm. in terms of being in those really monster workouts. You're able to kind of make them a little bit more digestible or as we call them exercise confetti. So I'm looking forward to that because again, as we start to get into Christmas in the Puerto Rican traditions of celebrating Christmas, it is a month, month long tradition to celebrate the entire month. And when I think of it, I think of all of like the joy and the expression of like barandas, which are like typical to like Christmas caroling. So I would love to know, Coach, again, I know I asked you to have your favorite holiday, but if you had to celebrate one holiday for an entire month, would it be Christmas as well? 
Oh, 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 that's a really hard one. Yeah, I mean, like you could only have the traditions that are surrounding Christmas. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say I'd switch to Hanukkah because it's already eight days long. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I could cheat and it, it would it would work. I think I'm going to go with Hanukkah with that one versus Christmas. Because I feel like the Christmas, I feel like Christmas is like a couple of days but it's sprinkled out. People always ask if I want like Christmas to last two days. I'm like, well, it kind of already does. I think, I mean, again, so all you have to do is head to Puerto Rico. You can have it for the entire month, all the way to January 6th because Three Kings Day is very, very, um, it's kind of Three Kings Day is the official ending, I would say, of that Christmas season. But um, I'm curious now, would you prefer to have, or would you rather have a traditional eggnog or would you rather a traditional coquito, which is a coconut milk-based eggnog that is very Ooh. well loved in the Caribbean? Uh, okay, I do have a follow-up question after I answer this. Because I thought okay. a coquito, isn't the coquito the frog? Oh, that's a coqui, which is, okay. yes, the frog. Then That's the actual official animal, if you will. I'm using air quotes, friends, I can't see, <laughs> of Puerto Rico because it's um, native there and makes a very, sim- uh, makes a sound that sounds like a coqui. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to probably have the coquito because coconut sounds delicious and it's like silky and I'm not a huge dairy person and the whole name of eggnog really throws me off. So <laughs> um, I'm going to go with a coquito. Ooh, okay. Good choice, my friend. It is delicious. It is so good. It's, again, one of the things I look forward to this time of year, for sure, along with my turon, which is that almond nugget pastry kind of, oh, it's not a pastry. Mm. It's like a hard, it's all delicious though. So with that said, friends, what's also delicious is that you guys only have about 75 seconds left here before you have that two minute recovery waiting for you, knowing that after you get into that recovery, you just have three more sets and then we'll have a cool down on the other side. So you guys definitely have done a phenomenal job with this workout. Coach, what are you recommending folks maybe focus on as they wrap up this set? Even if you aren't feeling like there's another gear to shift up to, I want Mm -hmm. you to focus on staying even with this effort and not letting it dip back. Now, if you're having any little soreness, any little niggles, that's okay. You can go ahead and... I was going to try and make a cookie joke, but that didn't really work. So (laughs) (laughs) you can go ahead and shift down. But if it's a mental portion of you just getting tired, try to take this recovery, reset, and then go right back in to match the effort of this last rep and not let yourself kind of slide back in the sleigh. Mm, Because, of course, we're going to slay all the way through this entire holiday season. So with that said, Coach, I think that's great advice for folks. And right about here is where we're going to say, friends, it's that time to pull it back a little bit. Pull back on those reindeer reins in three, two, one, and pull it back into your walk, your jog, your walk, or a conversation pace, whatever feels good to you. Now, as everybody picks their how or their walk or jog or maybe just that conversational pace i'm gonna give you a this or that that i feels like gonna be more of an and than an or okay Okay. and this one i think is gonna make you giggle would you rather have christmas tree tinsel for hair or have fingernails that light up like christmas lights of course it's gonna be and and (laughs) i feel like you already have tinsel like you have tinsel year round that so. was exactly why I'm like, I have to ask her this one. I do yeah. actually have fair hair, which yes. is basically tinsel in my mm-hmm. hair year round. So yeah, this is a no brainer for me. It's going to be an and, but I didn't know if for sure it was going to be an and for you. Yeah. I mean, how could you say no? This sounds, it, it sounds incredibly festive. I am curious. Do you, have you ever gone to like an ugly sweater Christmas party? No, but I want to be invited to one. Okay. They are <laughs> a lot of fun. And that's where, when I think of maybe having those fingernails that light up like Christmas lights. I feel like they are the perfect accessory for an ugly Christmas sweater party kind of thing. So I would would do it for my day-to-day life. Okay. It might make, it might make a little of the like day-to-day life a little bit more difficult. I think with all of those little baubles on, I know you're adding baubles and bows to the holiday challenge, but baubles and bows on your fingernails may make average day-to-day life a little harder, but that's okay. When I do the, when I do the ball of stress workout with the challenge, those nails would get in the way. Cause even if I'm not having to actually use a ball and I'm just using like a can or just doing body weight, I feel like I'd get distracted. Be like, Ooh, shiny. Oh, it comes back. Maybe I would have to like use a snap check 
necklace that we're going to be having to help me not get distracted by my pretty nails. That's exactly what I think. And with that said, friends, let's go ahead and not get distracted by the nail talk or the like pretty sparkles. Let's get right into it. Going into our second set in three, two, and one. Again, you're taking that up to that RP of six to eight. So knowing that that six is more of that sentence pace, that tempo pace, where it's more like a half marathon pace. And that seven and eight starts to get into more of that one to two or maybe three words. Usually you're working really hard, maybe more like a 10K or a 5K pace, but we know that you're moving, you're grooving regardless of whatever it is for you. So we are excited right about here is we're going to lock it in for the remainder of this set. Coach, I am really curious because I think that you would probably be very hungry if you had to choose between one of these two, but would you rather eat fruit cake? or candy canes, but that's the only food you can consume for two full days. That is not recommended for for the record. We are going on the record here as coaches to say, please don't do that. Um, I knew you were going to ask me this one. Oh yeah, for sure. I have to. I have to. So I I, go for it, friends. You could talk yourself through it. I feel like I could talk myself through it. You have to go with fruitcake. There's so, nothing. I mean, what would you I, literally get from the candy cane? I don't know if you actually even know this. I'm not a peppermint person. I don't like candy canes. What? I don't. I don't like the peppermint a- extract. I don't like candy canes. I don't like candy canes with chocolate. I do not like them, Sam. I am. So by default, I'm going to have the fruit cake. but I also don't like dried fruit. So I'm going to be picking out a lot out of my fruit cake. Okay. So does that mean that we can't do any seasonal taste testing of the fuel that's peppermint focused this year? I mean, I'll I'll stomach it, but I really don't I don't like peppermint. Like even peppermint patties are a stretch. Wow. I know. I I didn't I realized like we I've never disclosed this in our relationship before. Yeah, cuz I love peppermint. And so for the record, my treat this time of year is switching over from my regular espresso based drink all year round. I look forward to that peppermint mocha. I, you guys can keep PSLs for the rest of your lives. I do not need a PSL at any point in my life. And after our pumpkin tasting or pumpkin spice (laughs) tasting, I really am going to go on the record and say, I really only want my pumpkin spice and my baked pumpkin bread, but peppermint and chocolate I feel like they're just like this little love baby that should have been together the entire time <laughs> and I am shocked to hear that somebody wouldn't like it is but, it a I latte mean, so is it a P- PML that you, I, it should be why Starbucks get oh, on it my friend no, we need to find it to, we need to do a S so it's PMS I'm just having my PMS <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys oh my goodness well they can I mean but I will tell you if you get me more PMLs my PMS symptoms are usually a lot lower so maybe um, that's what the holiday is it's like one long time of PMS and we're just trying to save you from being that miserable and yeah. PMSing the entire holiday season <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Especially with the support of the team. If you guys join in on TFB training. So Why didn't we make that part of the marketing? <laughs> I mean, kind of, kind of are right here. And now we're telling you, I mean, we're not going to necessarily send you guys um, PMS or PMLs, but so no candy canes for you. And you'll pick out. It sounds to me like what I see in my head is that you're literally just picking out all of the fruit from the from the bread material of the fruit cake. Does that sound about right? It's it's about it. Even though um, I believe it's Alton Brown actually apparently makes a great fruit cake and he mm-hmm. gifts it to everybody in like the Food Network family and they all wait for his coveted fruit cake. So maybe if Alton Brown's listening, if you want me to try your fruit cake, I will sacrifice my taste buds for the art of science. So I'm surprised, is, it, is he one of your favorite? Because I feel like he's more science-y, but do you like the way that he approaches his food in a science-y way? Yeah. It, okay. I can't, no, I feel like I'm going to go back. I don't know if it's Tim Allen or Alton Brown. Ted Allen, Ted Allen, not Tim Allen. Tim Allen is okay. Santa Claus. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that's a, that's on theme for sure. Well, with that said, we have 30 seconds left here before we pull it back into our recovery. So I do think it's time for another Would You Rather. All right. I think I'm up. So would you rather have to loudly sing the chorus of Jingle Bells every time you walk into a room for an entire week or wear a Santa suit every day 
for a week. I'm wearing a Santa suit. I'm gonna rock that Santa suit. It's gonna be so fabulous, along with that tinsel for my hair and the light up nails. I am so looking forward to it. Yeah, you're gonna so schwitz. That's... You know how hot okay. that thing is. You're you gonna say it had to be a traditional and... Santa suit. I'm making it my own. So with that, <laughs> we're pulling back in our recovery in three, two, and one. You're gonna schwitz. You're gonna need a plots. You're gonna kind of get all the Yiddish. I don't know what a plots is. What's a plots? Pl so you know what schwitzing is? Yes, I totally know what that is. I've used that terminology, but I've never used plots. You've never used plots? I don't even know what it is. Mm -mm. All right. I have to, I'm going to have to look up like the traditional, uh, the traditional definition of it. But mm -hmm. got, I got a plot. Like I got to like wipe away the sweat. Like you're plotting. Like a blotting, but plotting instead of blotting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. I got to be honest with you. When you say I've got a plot, it makes me think you have to go to the back. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so God. sorry. But that's what it made me sound like. I was like, I know we were talking about eating fruit cake and you don't like fruit cake. So maybe you have to go to the bathroom now. I don't know, my friend. So no, oh, I did. I did not know that. This took a turn. <laughs> Even though I guess technically I've been using it wrong, like Again, buttering my biscuit. I use that saying wrong. So the official definition of plots is to collapse or faint as as from surprise, excitement, or exhaustion. Oh I always goodness. thought like I'm plotting, like I'm I'm wiping the way of the sweat. So I am not up in my Yiddish, apparently. I, I think there's the Shelby version of Yiddish and it should come with its own <laughs> translation book for sure. There's a Shelby language for everything, not just Yiddish. So yeah. <laughs> Well, with that said, friends, it is that time, about 30 seconds, we're going to take it into our next set. So I want you to check in with yourself. How do you feel about the previous sets? How do you feel about where you are now? There is some fatigue likely settling in. And this is maybe where you're thinking, I don't really need to follow with this workout. I'm cool just staying right here in this walk or this recovery. But we're going to challenge you to push it on up, knowing that you just have two more hard efforts and then a whole lot of beautiful recovery in between. So let's make it happen. Show up for yourself right here and now in three, two, and one. Hopefully you're not plotting now that I know the proper definition. Yeah, let's well, definitely no plotting out there. <laughs> um, so let's see, friend, with Christmas. Hmm, there's so hit, many hit good me. would you rathers. There really are. Oh, goodness. Oh, I, there's some I've, good one. There's so many good ones. See, we don't pre-pick these. We literally scroll through and pick them on the fly. So yes. for okay. optimal possibilities of getting the most um, authentic like, reaction. Yes. Okay. I, I definitely, I definitely want to know this one. Would you rather not celebrate Christmas or not celebrate your birthday? That, that oh. sounds mean. I would rather not celebrate my birthday. I don't really celebrate my birthday to begin with. So really? not really. I know. I know. Okay. Don't, don't everybody go Aw, at the same time. Like I, I celebrate my birthday, but I, we've never been big into birthdays. Mm -hmm. um, and also my sister and I, our birthdays are one day apart. So we always like had special things to make our birthday special as singulars. But a lot of times we would go on a trip for like both of our birthdays. So um, that was just an excuse to go to Disney, though. So I, yeah, but I'm I love really sad not to have Christmas, okay. especially with a kiddo now to like see the magic through their eyes. I, I would, I would pick Christmas. Plus, there's more fun decorations, yeah. and I get to keep them up for longer. There's, I mean, you could always have fun decorations for your birthday. There's nothing to say that you don't throw yourself a Christmas themed birthday. Oh man, if I had a Christmas birthday, it would be lit. No, no, it wouldn't. Let me tell you what, it would not be lit because you're basically, everyone's busy. You can't have anyone around and lots of things are closed. I feel that, like that sounds like a dream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you just ex like explained my best birthday, but I, I am a homebody for Christmas, but I'm even more of a homebody for New Year's. I don't go out and celebrate new year's i don't like driving around new year's eve i don't like any of that so while i love the magic of new year's i don't actually like the celebration what about you because i feel like you'd be going out and like toasting at midnight yeah no i usually celebrate the day before in terms of going out and getting all um dolled up or ritzed up if you will or 
anything to bedazzle for sure, <laughs> but I'm not necessarily big in going out that night just because I love my tradition of starting off the next day, starting off the new year with a really beautiful, reflective, inspiring run, which I, I mean, I've, I've been doing it since I became a runner. I can't, I, there's nothing that I'd want to do New Year's Eve night that I would want more than that first run of the new year. It just makes me so happy. I feel like it sets the mood and sets the tone for the new year in a way that I really like on the right foot, if you will. So I love New Year's. It is actually one of my favorite times of year. And I don't love the arbitrary new year, new you that comes into play. But what I do love is kind of what we're doing in this Slay the Holidays challenge with our final week, where it is an opportunity. It's a beautiful time to kind of rethink things through, reframe. As you wrap up the year, you start to have a lot of reflection, a lot of chances for you to really see, like give yourself that pat in the back on all the wins, see where maybe you can kind of help you focus for the new year. So I love that. I love doing that with folks this time of year too, and hearing people talk through what they want to get out of the next year as we roll into it. Ooh, okay, so now talking about the challenge and talking about the reworking and the reframing, we're going to be obviously doing some reflective questions. And I have an interesting question for you to have for this or that. Mm -hmm. Would you rather live this past year over again or skip ahead 10 years? Wow. Why would anybody skip ahead 10 years? Like, and that's the interesting thing. I wonder even for people, and this is actually a true thought broken question. Like this isn't a setup for a pun. Right. But as we are getting through these last few sets, as you're thinking ahead to the year, I think it's actually a really awesome question to ask because it's a twofold. We're going to be thinking about this year, the good, maybe the not so good. And then you're also going to be envisioning where you would be in 10 years. So I view it actually as a really good question versus a true this or that. It kind of all melds into one. Yeah, I want to definitely talk more about it when we get into this recovery in three, two, and one, because I think that what we tend to do is that one's very stark. Like that's like, a, like mm -hmm. why would I wish away 10 years? But we do tend to wish away day to day mm -hmm. where oh, I can't get, I can't wait to get through this workout. I can't wait to be done with this. I can't wait to get done with this project. I can't wait for this week to be over. So you hear a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And essentially, while it doesn't sound anywhere near as shocking as, wow, you're getting rid of 10 years because you're skipping ahead 10 years, it is essentially wishing away your time. And that's really the best gift that we all have. So mm -hmm. I love the opportunity of actually utilizing our time, looking at it from a, okay, what happened this year? What would I like to bring into in the new year? What would I like to bring forward into the new year. So I think, I mean, I think hands down, I'd rather relive another year. Gosh, any chance that we get of having more time on this beautiful merry-go-round of life, mm -hmm. I'm going to take that. And I think, and that's really kind of like when I saw that question, that's kind of how it struck me, especially after putting together the workbook and us thinking about what it actually looks like for mm -hmm. that final week of the challenge as we start heading into the new year. It's a time to where everybody kind of focuses on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, but we've talked about it. We like building up into that time. So we go into the new year with a good idea. And we're both into our words of the year, which mm -hmm. definitely changing my year, my word of the year up because it's, it's not going to be resilience again. <laughs> I had my fill. I was resilient AF and I'm not going there again. Is it the movie? Was it called Bruce Almighty where um, Morgan Freeman played God? Yeah. Was it okay? Where he talks about that exactly. Where like, do you think that when you pray for these things that you're going to get it exactly the way you see it? Or is it an opportunity for you to actually really work through it? Which is what we're going to do right here. Now we're going to really work through it and show ourselves that we've got what it takes to be a stronger runner, which we all want to be in three, two, and one. So I think that that actually shows like resiliency. It's gosh, so much stuff can happen to show that we are resilient when we're working at getting stronger or faster or focusing on our goals when it comes to our running you're not going to get there without that challenge and that's exactly what this challenge is of pushing yourself into this workout so if you've been kind of holding back and playing it safe 
Maybe you've even been dipping into conversation pace a little bit. This is your time, my friend, because to be better, to soar higher, to rise to the occasion, you kind of have to get through the nitty gritty, the hard parts of it, which is what's so exciting about the challenge as well, is that what we hear from so many folks is that they know that they are better runners, they're stronger runners, they're more efficient runners when they do hill repeats or they do incline work, but it can be hard to do so. So we have heard time and time again that our treadmill workouts are so much fun, a little bit of a booty burner and they <laughs> enjoy it. And I think with this time of year, we're looking forward to having you guys join us to rise up to the occasion with our little bit of our incline workout and hitting that treadmill as well. Oh yeah. And again, we're going to bring it up as the ball starts to get ready to drop. So a little play and everything. I do have to laugh when you're saying about going indoors because one of the this for that questions, would you mm -hmm. rather have snow on January 1st or a warm 80 degree day? And that I'm like, like well, life, obviously, yeah. obviously this person who made the list did not live in Florida cause yeah. we only really actually, get one option. <laughs> and plus for us, that's a cool 80 degree day. Like, oh, it's 80. <laughs> right? It's a little chilly out here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow. absolutely. But I do want to know this one because I think this one would come in handy for us. Would you rather be able to say Happy New Year in 100 languages or know the answer to 1,000 random trivia questions? I mean, who? I fake knowing all these languages and I also know a lot of random trivia. So which one would I like to be like have the full full on? I'm going to say I'd probably want to say Happy New Year in 100 languages. That's incredible. I mean, I love languages and I love like, I think also you are very courageous in your language expression. So even if you can't say it exactly, you're willing to at least try it, which is what it takes to be able to learn anything new. Um, so I think that's absolutely awesome. I would love to have a thousand random trivia answers, like really have them like at my disposal. Cause whenever we have done trivia fun with folks, it's amazing how they even retain that information. I mean, I will say my sister has a gift of useless trivia I mean, at her how? disposal. It's just her way, her brain, it just stores it yeah. and it's amazing. I want so. that kind of com computing abilities in my brain, but so far it's it does not hold a lot of random trivia. It holds random like segments of stuff, but not necessarily trivia focus. But again, that's what it's all about is celebrating our unique aspects. And that's where I think that that reframe and refocus week to wrap up our challenge really allows us to kind of see our unique traits, our unique strengths, and how we can continue to harness them in into the new year. So very excited about that. And kind of like the this or that, it's going to be, do I want this or do I want that? And while there will mm -hmm. be opportunities to have ands, sometimes you do have to make those harder, finite decisions to really propel yourself forward. And this one's going to get a little mean, though. So are you prepared for this, this or that? I'm ready. Would you rather make a resolution to give up sweets this year or give mm -hmm. up showers and baths? I'm definitely giving up sweets. Like really? Not, oh my gosh. I take like three showers a day. I cannot fathom <laughs> not being able to shower. That is the hardest reason why like any of the Ragnar relays or any camping comes into mind because the first thing that comes to mind is not a, where am I going to eat or how am I going to eat or hydrate? None of those things come to mind. My only concern is how am I going to shower? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Like so I could team sweet. sweet. Team yeah, Sweet mm -hmm. is giving you guys up, apparently. No, just Team kidding. Sweet, the captain. I am definitely going to take captaining role of Team Shower because I want to be able to shower. And I think you guys are going to appreciate that. Living in Florida, you have to be able to captain Team Shower. So with that <laughs> said, friends, this is your chance. 30 seconds are left. Let's bring it up a notch. So go ahead and pop it up a little bit faster. Pull into shortening that stride, relaxing those shoulders, going a little bit quicker, pushing even maybe to that RP of nine or 10, knowing that you've got what it takes to finish it up because we're going to have that recovery and then walk it out together. So let's go, my friends, here for five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful work. Go ahead and pull it on back. And even if you need to bring it down, maybe even bring your hands down to your knees to catch your breath a little bit, start to slow that heart rate down, and then nice and easy, bring it back into that recovery walk. Coach, this has been a whole lot of fun. It but really has. I think I know this answer. I really, 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 really do. 
Okay. Would you rather have to kiss your dog on the lips at midnight or your least favorite extended family member on the cheek? <laughs> Just pucker up my little Luna. We're getting, we're going to get a kiss at midnight. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, she's adorable. Why would she you want to give her a kiss? Well, and honestly, all the dog owners out there, you get kissed by your dog sometimes yeah. french kiss unexpectedly yeah, so if absolutely. i have to if i have to take one of the team and give her a kissy i will give her a kissy to avoid having to do it to anybody else yeah i do like i do love kissing dog nosies because i think dog noses are just so cute uh we actually anyway. have a thing when my mom feeds luna she makes her give her a nose kiss before she puts her food down it's Aww. really adorable Oh, really? That yeah. sounds so sweet. It oh. is. It pays for the times that she's not the nicest dog in the world. So that's our French okay. mascot is going into the new year with some no, new obedience training under her belt or her leash or Aww. any collar. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. I mean, she's she's evolving. She's learning. And that's all. That's what it's all about. So coach, we have talked about in the past that neither of us are really big into resolutions. We are really big though in, again, supporting each other and supporting others to kind of live their best lives. So friends, we do know that the holidays can be incredibly um, stressful. They can be a lot of joy, but there it can be wrapped up with a whole lot of expectations and obligations as well. So we would love for you guys to join us so you could have that extra bit of support. You could have that extra bit of sparkle and joy with your fellow Slay Squad with that 28 day Slay the Holidays challenge that we are going to be kicking off on November 20th. You're not going to want to miss this. It is our last holiday challenge of the year. And again, I think you guys are going to have so much fun. So where should they find us, Coach? How do they get registered? Absolutely. So we go into our episode notes. You know where it is well. And go ahead and click the link to sign up. Get your seat on the sleigh. And if you're still on the fence or off on the naughty or nice list, if you're wondering what the feel of these challenges are, if you've never participated in them before, this is exactly how they go. We mix the work with the fun. We make it to where you're reaching your goals, you're staying on track, you're not dropping the ball on yourself, but it doesn't have to be an entire grind fest. We wanna make it fun. We wanna make it actually possible for you to live your life, get through the holidays and not just survive them, but actually slay the holidays away. So put this on your list. Give the gift to yourself. Come join us for a truly festival time with lots of surprises ahead. We're going to have weekly prizes. We're going to have some of the challenges we talked about, plus many, many more. And maybe like us, you'll learn a thing or two about what you might like this or that coming into the holiday season. Absolutely. So I can't wait to have you guys join us. And of course, we've got so much fun going on here at Time for Brunch as well. So do check out our Quick Bites because we're in the middle of our holiday series where, of course, that gift giving guide and having a whole lot of fun with sharing some of the favorite uh, gifts that you can either give yourself besides this challenge, of course, or to have others give you or maybe for some of the other runners on your list as well. So I can't wait to have you guys joining us with that. We also want you to give yourself a huge high five. This workout was definitely no joke, but you guys definitely showed up. So it's really, really important that you rehydrate maybe with some coquito. I don't know. You refuel maybe with some latkes and you take care of yourself. And with that said, friends, as you're recovering, you're resetting, after you've checked in that episode notes and signed up, if you would love to share us or give us a review wherever you listen to our podcast, we would very, very much appreciate that. You can join us again with Time for Brunch Quick Bites on Wednesday and, of course, our long run as well. Can't wait to keep sharing time with you, my friends. But regardless of when or where, we're going to keep serving up more miles with a side of slaying smiles.